Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to another video. Today for you guys, I want to talk about a subject that I think we need to talk about uh, going forward for Kingdom Hearts 4, something that I really want Square Enix to refrain from doing when it comes to the promotional cycle of this game. Now that we are again in this whole phase of uh, receiving Kingdom Hearts 4 trailers, likely for the next kind of coming years, I would say for the next two years, hopefully, uh, hopefully it shouldn't take too long before we actually receive this game. I am betting on about 2024 at this stage. Uh, because of Kingdom Hearts 3's promotional cycle from the year of 2013 to that of 2019, there was something they did in that promotional cycle that kind of gets me a little bit worried about Kingdom Hearts 4, and I know it's something that uh, a lot of people have complained about. So what I'm talking about is how much of Kingdom Hearts 3 Square Enix ended up showing off before we ended up getting the game. What I wanted to do for this video was count just how many Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers we received before the actual release of the game. And although of course, like I know, we ended up getting like a lot of Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers, I didn't know it was exactly this many. From 2013 to 2019, we received a total of 16 trailers, which is absolutely crazy. Now, that is trailers, that's also not including the extra snippets of gameplay that came out, whether we look at the uh, small little 30 second uh, advertisement trailers that were rolling shortly before the release in January of 2019, or of course the big gameplay segments that were showing off at the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere event or other places like the Tokyo Game Show. This is just primarily trailers. Now, I don't really have too much of an issue with showing too many trailers, but the problem that comes along with that is the tendency of showing off a little bit too much of the game itself. Uh, Square Enix really almost showed us the entirety of Kingdom Hearts uh, 3 before we even got it. Now, I know it might seem rich for someone like myself to be complaining about this only because, you know, obviously I benefit when a Kingdom Hearts trailer comes out. It gives me more news to talk about, more videos to create. But I am dead ass honest when I say this. I really hope for this time around for Kingdom Hearts 4, we do not have anywhere near close to 16 trailers. I think when looking at something like 6 to 7 to 8, maybe with a little bit of a gameplay deep dive is probably enough. I, I'm absolutely stunned with the fact that Kingdom Hearts 3 literally received 16 trailers. Now, of course that's a lot of trailers, but it was more so the contents of what was shown in these trailers. Now, obviously, uh, Square Enix ended up revealing all of the Disney worlds uh, before, of course, we ended up receiving the game. And this isn't anything new, by the way. Uh, if you are thinking that we won't see all of the Disney worlds that are going to be in Kingdom Hearts 4 before release, then I am sorry, uh, you're gonna have to face that. The Disney worlds serve as very good marketing and promotion for a Kingdom Hearts game. And again, it's nothing new. This is something that Square Enix generally almost always do for any new Kingdom Hearts game. They will show off all of the Disney worlds before the game's release. It's a good way of harnessing certain communities that are into a particular Disney IP. If that IP is in Kingdom Hearts, there's a high chance that the person that likes that Disney IP will likely end up playing Kingdom Hearts. So at the point of them not showing off a Disney world, that's pretty much losing out on promotion. So you can bet your bottom booty, they will show off all of the Disney worlds for Kingdom Hearts 4 before we get the game. My problem lies more so with the content that we saw towards Kingdom Hearts 3 looking at the end game sequences. We obviously saw the Keyblade Graveyard, we saw Scala and Kylum, we even saw the final world, on top of the anti-aqua or dark aqua reveal as well, all before release. This is one thing that I am honestly crossing my fingers for when looking at Kingdom Hearts 4, is that Square Enix have learnt not to show off too much of this game before its release. I really do feel like now going back through all of these trailers and seeing primarily those end game sequences, I, I feel like I can almost like experience a lot of the pivotal parts of Kingdom Hearts and pretty much get a basic scoop of this entire game and what it has to offer by simply just watching these trailers. Now, of course, 
uh, any good game studio has to promote their game, they have to sell it uh, in order to make it look enticing and give the uh, consumer a basic understanding and idea as to what they'll eventually end up spending their money on. So you've got to show off a decent amount of the game. But to a point of literally showing us like the final stages, the final world, Skylar Kylum, Keyblade Graveyard, I think was just the silliest move. On top of that too, something that I think the entire community agrees on is that whole reveal of anti aqua in the Frozen trailer from 2018, yeah, that was probably the wrong move. I think it got a lot of people talking about Kingdom Hearts 3, but really when you look at it, it wasn't really necessary to display that in a trailer because the only people that are going to be interested in that are people that are going to end up inevitably buying the game anyway. It's not like for someone that has no clue as to what Kingdom Hearts is, if they were to see that, they'd be like, all right, you've now sold me. So I just don't see it being totally necessary as to why they actually ended up including that. I can only imagine Imagine that the reveal of anti aqua um, if we didn't know about it and we actually experienced it in Kingdom Hearts 3 for ourselves when we got to that point of the game would have been that much more hype rather than going to Kingdom Hearts 3 and knowing that at some point there will be a sequence where we end up seeing an anti aqua and we have to fight her, like literally fight her with Sora, because it wasn't only just the reveal of anti aqua in Kingdom Hearts 3, but uh, at the Tokyo Game Show 2018, Square Enix even went ahead to show the actual boss fight, albeit only about like 25 or 30 seconds of the boss fight, but they ended up showing the boss fight, gameplay snippets of it, so like, it was just, it was way too much. While we're on the topic of uh, TGS 2018, they also did a bit of a gameplay deep dive into Kingdom Hearts 3 when looking at the Frozen Slider minigame. I don't know why they thought that this was necessary to show off, but they ended up showing off this minigame. Something that, again, we really didn't need to know about. I get it, they were trying to portray the idea that Many games are back and that they're kind of all sort of slightly different like they usually always are uh, but I just didn't see that as being totally necessary as well as that the uh, toy box uh, doll boss fight was also shown off in this gameplay too. Something that I know people were already talking about uh, in the masses due to experiencing that boss fight at the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere event, but still that being said, I don't think it was something that needed to be shown off. And on top of that, if we go through all of the numerous amount of trailers, so I'll just quickly read out these trailers. Uh, we have the reveal trailer from 2013 at E3 2013. We have the D23 2013 trailer, the E3 2015 trailer, the Jump Festa 2015 trailer, the 2017 Orchestra trailer, the D23 2017 trailer, the Classic Kingdom trailer, the 2018 Monsters Inc. trailer, the 2018 Frozen trailer, the 2018 Pirates trailer, the Big Hero 6 trailer, the Tangled trailer, trailer from Luca Comics and Games, the Winnie the Pooh trailer, the theme song trailer that included Don't Think Twice, we got the literal opening movie, I cannot even believe this, I mean it, it was great to see the opening movie but again I don't think it was something that they <laughs> needed to show off, and finally the final battle trailer which Do you want like a, a, a brief rundown in Kingdom Hearts 3, then you just watch the final battle trailer. Holy shit, my god. Uh, yeah, for the people that didn't end up watching the final battle trailer, you honestly did yourself a service before playing Kingdom Hearts 3 because this trailer, uh, I'm gonna go through and list all of the things that I believe shouldn't have appeared in this trailer. This was like really the big one. And this was meant to be like the final pin ultimate uh, like trailer before Kingdom Hearts 3's release. And oh my god. First things first, Xehanort summoning Kingdom Hearts and enveloping it in darkness at the very beginning of the trailer. Aqua falling into darkness, Buzz being consumed by darkness, Riku gameplay, whole bunch of mini games. They didn't need to show off this many mini games. The 10,000 Heartless Fight, Kyrie and Lee CG cinematic, The Final World, Diz or Ansem the Wise talking to Ansem, Keyblade Graveyard stuff, yeah, all of it. Didn't need to be here. The fight between Riku and 
Riku Replica, Yang Xehanort scene with Sora, the team getting flattened by Demon Tides, Shion about to strike Axel down, Axel being laser blasted by Xemnas, Donald's Zeta Flare, Riku fending off against the Demon Tide with Sora losing his mind, and finally, the ultimate one, Scarlet Kylan. Square, don't you dare. I'm telling you right now, Square. Don't you dare show me that final world for Kingdom Hearts 4, okay? D d I j d don't do it! There were so many different cutscenes that were shown off in these trailers to do with what organization member is in what Disney world, and even to the point of giving us a basic idea as to what organization member uh, is kind of doing in that Disney world towards what their intention is. Literally, you can get a pretty basic understanding of Kingdom Hearts 3 by just going through all of the trailers. And I think that's a bit of a problem when you look at the fact that this is a 20 to 25 hour experience. The amount of gameplay that was also included, I understand Square Enix wanted to be able to advertise uh, as many of the different gameplay mechanics in Kingdom Hearts 3 as humanly possible. But still, I, I don't see the need of uh, having footage for certain mini games and other side activities. A lot of the Keyblade transformations ended up being shown off, so it really ended up getting to a point with Kingdom Hearts 3 with by the time I was actually playing the game, there wasn't really room for a lot of excitement and surprise left to experience for myself. Don't get me wrong, there was certainly a lot of stuff there when I was playing it for the first time where I was like, oh my god, this is incredible. But I already felt like I had experienced at least a fraction of the game before even playing it. So yeah, I only hope for uh, Kingdom Hearts 4, Square Enix have learnt their lesson. We will be getting quite a few trailers for this game, but I only do hope that maybe have one more trailer that shows off a little bit more of Quadratum. Then start dipping into the Disney worlds. They'll obviously make a huge deal over something like Star Wars. That's going to be fantastic promotion for them. I think we can all agree that Star Wars is pretty much in the game. That's gotta be Endor. And the same can be said for the other Disney worlds as well. But when it comes down to the context of the story that is unfolding within these Disney worlds, try to keep it to a bare minimum. Give us a certain idea of what's going on, but don't reveal key plot points that are happening in these Disney worlds within the trailers. Kind of like with what was going on in uh, the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer situation. Please, for the love of God, leave some room for surprise and do not show off any more original worlds. Uh, as well as end game sequences. I swear to God, if we see some end game sequences in these trailers, I'm gonna lose it. Now well, guys, that is all for today. I'd love to gauge your opinion on this. How much of Kingdom Hearts 4 do you think Square Enix should show off? I've already seen some people saying that the only trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4 that they're going to watch is the very first one we got uh, last month, the reveal trailer. And from then on forward, they're not watching anything else, which I think is fair enough. So I'd love to know what you guys think. However, dudes, I'm Cynical. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day and I'll catch you guys real soon. Peace.